Right, so let's build a KIST Hyper Low CG. So this isn't going to be a watch and all thing. I'm just going to give you a step-by-step -step overview of what I'm doing. So I'm going to start off with a Wolf PDB. And this is the V2 version, which is noted by the little writing there. We've got a KISS, 2, uh, KISS V2 board. And it's wired like so. And the Wolf PDB comes with sticky back tape to attach it to the reverb frame and it also comes with four of these sort of rubber screw standoffs soft mounts whatever you want to call them now because the cg has such stiff arms i basically just haven't bothered with a, a, a nut here i've simply just screwed these onto there you could, if you wanted to, use longer screws and use a nut if you wish to do so. The one quirk of using the Wolf PDB, and I'm presuming this doesn't apply if you use it with the reverb, but if you put your flight controller onto the quad like so, you will notice immediately that you would want to connect your LiPo connect your uh, battery wire here and the flight controller sits too close to the Wolf PDB to do that comfortably so you could raise the rubber standoffs or because I'm lazy I'm just going to bung some o-rings onto these and then that will give me enough clearance just to comfortably mount my battery wires. In terms of component components, obviously we've got the KISS stuff. I'm using Acon 35 amp 6S ESCs. Um, these are two that I already had and I've had for ages. Hope they still work. These are two new ones that I've just got. And I bought these from Banggood simply because the only place that sells them, I think, in the UK is Drawn is Life. And I once bought, I think, four or five Acon ASCs from them. And they sent me out one less and wrote on the um, invoice, we'll send you the other one when we have some more, which I thought was highly unprofessional, bearing in mind it was the first time I've ever used them. So, yeah, I got mine from Banggood. Um, if you're not familiar with Banggood, you'll hear lots of people saying that they sell cloned stuff and whatever, which they do. But it's usually frames and things like that. If you buy an Acon ESC, you will receive an Acon ESC. If you buy a T-Motor motor, you will receive a T-Motor motor. So as long as you know what you're buying, there's nothing to worry about. Now, these are only 35 amp, but they're rated for 6S. An amp is kind of being slapped on ESCs left, right and centre. Everything now is 50 amp and 60 amp. This is a freestyle quad. We're not going to be going Mach 5 for 5 minutes at a time. We don't need anything higher than 35 amp as long as it's a quality ESC. A quality ESC, to be honest with you, 25 amp would be fine. Amps aren't higher on 6S voltages, um, and the Acon ESC is really good quality. Um, only reason I'm using separates in this case, although to be fair I like separates a lot, is because we're using the Wolf PDB. The alternative route would be to use a 4-in-1 ESC, get rid of the Wolf PDB, and mount like so but we will lose the ability, or should I say, we'll lose the on-screen display and the ability to run GPS, which on this six inch quad, I want to do so. Um, if you want to run KISS V2 on a four in one, probably the item that you want to look at is the TBS Evo 
VTX, which is pretty expensive, but has a proper on-screen display on, about, on it. Um, if you want to be cheap, then obviously you can just use the uh, battery voltage, etc. on your FPV camera. In terms of other components, um, I'm using the Zing 2207 Malters. Um, for no particular reason other than the fact that I've got them lying around. I really wanted to use the RCN power motors, but the 2207.5 1850 kV I think are going to be too battery hungry for a 6 inch. And the 2306 1800 kV, which I really love, are on my other 6 inch, so it's pointless taking them off. So of the other motors that I've got, these are the ones I'm going to use. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be using TBS Crossfire. It's obviously a TBS Crossfire Nano Receiver. Um, got a Foxier Folco camera. And this is my first time using the Folco um, Mini. Um, I've used the Micro one and it's a great camera for in terms of FPV feed. But it has a horrible vertical field of view. Um, and I much prefer the Predator V for v3 and a micro flavor um, so it's my first time trying this camera i might like it i might hate it um, but the only reason i've got it is because when i bought a lot of other stuff they didn't have any predators in stock and that pretty much covers it oh and we'll also be using a tbs unify 5 volt v3 and a vifly buzzer and the little cheapy um, seven quid GPS. And I've got an Axe C2 antenna in here. Wouldn't usually use that, but I found one in my toolbox. Um, I generally use a lollipop or um, one of those new Armway ones that have been released because I don't like paying 15 quid for an antenna, but I had it, so that's what we're using. So that's enough of the waffle. Um, first thing I'll do on any build is solder or should i say tin up everything i'm going to use and quite often things that i probably won't use but i might need in the future so i'm just going to tin all of this up do the same for the flight controller um, and go from there we're a little we're a short way into this build and all i've done at this stage is stuck on this TPU bit at the back which is neither here nor here if you're looking at this without building GPS I've stuck on my motors and just attached them with two bolts for now because I want to know basically I'll, I, I don't like to sort of put anything together too much until the end of the build I've quickly tinned up the KISS V2 flight controller which is really simple because we're only using it to attach our um, TBS crossfire and the buzzer or should I say the buzzer and I've tinned up pretty much everything on the Wolf PDB because it's always handy to have and it's a pig having to undo everything if you decide you want um, a pad that you haven't um, tinned up um, I've mounted my XT60 and I tend to have mine really short um, some people prefer them longer whatever floats your boat it doesn't really matter um, I'm using 16 gauge wire because I always do so the Wolf PDB comes with a nice XT60 using 14 gauge wire so I've just desoldered it because I hate thick wire I find it really irritating um, and I've never had any problems with 16 gauge wire even on 6S so that's absolutely fine with me I tend to be more of a sort of grower um, than a planner when it comes to building so I sort of feel my way around the build I don't really have a specific plan I just sort of let the components decide where they're going to go, which sounds really rt 40 but that's just kind of the way I am. Um, this is the VTX we're going to be using. I won't be using the pigtail, but the VTX will essentially just sit nicely in the back there, which leaves us with the decision as to where we want to mount the crossfire, which is always the piggy bit, where we want to mount um, the buzzer, which... I suppose I don't really need if I'm using GPS, but I'm an old-fashioned guy um, and I like to use one of these self-powered buzzers. And the only other thing that I need to sort out is I'm going to have to run a capacitor, or should I say I want to run a capacitor, 
so I just need to decide what size capacitor I'm going to use. Um, I tend to use 35 volt on 6S. Um, I've never had any issues. Um, some people say 50 volt. Personally, 35 volt is fine for me. Um, and it means that you're not sort of faced with a huge, sort of fine one, but a huge fat capacitor uh, that you've got to find a space for. And after trying tons of different camera mounts, some with crossfire holders, this this rear mount has got a crossfire holder as well. I don't like any of them. Um, the front mount isn't low enough on the frame for me, um, so it'll be blocked. The, the antennas will be blocked quite a lot. This rear mount sits the, an, the antennas right in the prop plane. Um, and although I don't tend to have a lot of prop strikes, um, I don't want my antenna sat, you know, sort of a five mil below um, spinning blades of death. But by default, I'm going to run mine on the nose for now. Um, if you want better range, you'd be better running this guy vertical or diagonally on the arm. And that way you're less likely to have issues when you're turning with um, the null point points on the end of um, end of the uh, the uh, the antenna. But I like a tidy quad, so mine is going to go on the nose. The other thing that we have with the Wolf PDB is this little guy, which is the microphone. And I don't know why this doesn't come pre-soldered. But I'm just going to solder mine on hither. And if you look at it very carefully, it's got a plus and minus on it. Um, so that will give you audio if you want to listen to your motors. In terms of how I will mount the Wolf PDB, what I've done, the back of this should be insulated. Um, and vice versa, the, the, the top of the carbon isn't conductive but just for a bit of peace of mind I've just stuck a bit of um, conformal coating over mine or alternatively you could just put a bit of tape um, around the corners and what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to get some 3M foam tape I'm going to double it up and stick a strip here and a strip here and then that will stick my Wolf PDB down um, and that is absolutely fine because if I take a big hit on the side, I'd, to be fair, I'd rather the, the sticky tape come unstuck, which it very rarely does, but I'd rather it come unstuck than this be rock solid here and snap or break, etc. Um, and I rather like the way actually that the, the CG, which isn't designed for this, sort of protects um, the um, ESC mounting points. If you compare it to the other KISS quad, you'll see that I've sort of run the um, heat shrink almost over the Wolf PDB to try and give a bit of protection from the bits that are sticking out. But the CG being a chunkier frame um, is offering a fair bit more protection. In terms of how and where I'm going to mount the capacitors, um, the way I'm going to attach them is to use 20 gorge wire so thin wire i'm going to attach the wire to the battery uh, to the um, battery terminal terminals here and i'm going to make them longer and then i can just mount the capacitor wherever i want without sort of it being fixed in place if i need to move it um, and capacitors were absolutely fine you, the, the rule of thumb with capacitors is that you want these legs to be really really short because it, it, um, it hurts the capacitance if they're not. But if you attach them to 20 gauge wire, it doesn't seem to have any sort of detrimental effect, or at least not in my experience, is basically the only annoying part. Um, and this is a really old Matek, what was it? Whatever that crap all-in-one flight controller was with the SPI receiver built in, which didn't work initially. Um, and this is my kind of door on the board for doing stuff like this. Um, so all I've done is basically just wired up, just quickly bodged in the power and ground wires and the signal wire. 
and I'm just going to flash the firmware on all of these ESCs. I don't need the mortars um, to make sure that they're all on the same firmware version um, because two of these ESCs are brand new and the other ones are pretty old. I'm not going to fanny around with any of the settings in BL Heli. The only one that I will do is make sure that the PWM frequency is set to 24 kilohertz rather than the 48 that would you usually use on a 4S um, because it can avoid some issues and because I don't want to do this again because uh, it's a pain in the arse um, I'm just going to set it up that way initially um, so I don't have to go back again and rebuild my quad because I'm using KISS um, we'll just flash it exactly the same way I'm not going to show you how but essentially we'll just plug in the USB make sure Betaflight is reading the COM port and then we'll go in to BL, BL Heli 32 and flash as normal. Just done that, they're all running 32.6, which is the latest version for these particular ESCs. Uh, PWM frequency is on 24 for all of them. Nothing else I've changed. I've even less left motor timing at auto, simple because I could mess around um, increasing the motor timing to try and squeeze out a little bit more power, but frankly, I don't need it. Um, and unless I have desyncs, etc., I'll just happily leave it on auto. Um, so that is it. So the next part is I can start installing my ESCs. ESCs are on. Really simple work. Um, front ones, because they should ideally be further up this arm. But because I'm working with existing motors that were cut short, um, my one job that I absolutely detest in this hobby is lengthening motor wires. So they're just going to have to stay closer to the motor than I would generally have them. I would usually sort of sit them nearer this um, screw here. Dead easy solder work, plus minus. And in this case, we don't have telemetry wires. So we've just got a ground and signal wire, which connect to the PDB. I've added two loose 20 gauge wire pieces to um, the battery turn them up terminals. And that is what I will use to solder to my um, capacitor. I had a change of heart with regards to the crossfire. And because I've got acres of space up here, even with my buzzer, I'm just basically going to stick it up front for ease. So really, the sort of everything is pretty much done at this case. It's just the sort of little bits of wiring for the camera and receiver etc um, but the major sort of setup and build um, and sort of a little bit of head scratching part is over um, i've put the other standoff on i still can't find this bloody standoff in my absolutely pig mess of a place and i can't find the hyperlow original camera mounts either um, so i might have to print some more off i have found the original Hyperlow um, session mount and this is the newer style version which I think you can get as a option for a couple of quid. Um, it usually comes with lips which stick up but I tend to run my sessions with um, GoPro armor, armor um, and they don't fit in particularly well so I just snip the end off mine. Um, so you can, to be honest, never had any issues with um, with these mounts but this one is obviously a little bit more secure with the back end on it, so whatever floats your boat. Either way, I'm probably going to run mine with a TPU mount of some sort, because I've got quite a lot knocking around. Um, and I'm going to run the Hero potentially on this guy. Um, so yeah, so it's just a sort of little fiddly bits now. None of it's particularly hard. Everything's really easy on this. We're, we're basically going to be soldering everything to the PDB and one of the sort of things that they say about this guy is because you're not sending or you're not running everything off one board like you would do with a beta flight all in one board like that Matek, uh, Matek board is that it reduces the actual noise whether that's marketing guff or not I don't know but it sort of makes um, a little bit of sense but anyway that's that so I'm basically now just going to finish the rest of it off. Um, obviously with the camera we've got three wires, nothing particularly hard there. Um, KISS, or should I say the Wolf PDB, will do um, camera control so we can wire that up as well. 
this little guy will just be wired up to buzzer plus and minus and ground and that's about it next stage is done I've just put in this camera even though I'm not using the going to be using these camera mounts just for now and we've got the TBS Unify um, 5 volt V3 wired into the Wolf PDB and we've got the Fox here um, Falco wired into the Wolf PDB as well um, TBS Unify yellow wire is obviously signal black is ground and red is 5 volt if we look at the Wolf PDB which also has its microphone soldered on now on this side of the board we have the high voltage power outputs which in this case is seven and a half volts on this side we have five volts because the TBS V3 needs five volts we've basically wired five volt plus and ground and then on the other side we've got video in and we've got smart audio I could have wired the smart audio to the receiver but it tends to sort of mean that you've got a million wires coming out of this so I just prefer to do it to the board in this case um, because the camera will take up to 6s I've wired the camera to the seven and a half volt and ground and on the other side we've got the camera um, signal wire because this particular camera comes with one of these annoying OSD cables I've removed the signal wire for the OSD and I've switched the cable this pink cable is now the OSD wire so this white cable was where the pink one is now on the second hole across um, and I've removed the pink one from the from the farthest right hole um, because we don't need the pink wire that was for um, basically getting battery voltage onto your camera um, which we're not going to use because the PDB will do that um, so essentially that's just given me a longer wire which I can use um, to get camera control from here um, we don't need this spare ground wire because this not being because this isn't a uh, base of flight board we're not going to have the issue where you have to have the ground wires etc on the same pads or all go into the flight control otherwise you'll get flickering OSD so we can safely remove that ground wire um, which I'll do in a minute still got my flapping cables flapping wires um, for the capacitor because that will be going in later and I'm simply going to put it here now over the top of the Unify um, still haven't done anything to the flight controller which will sort of be going in last so all I'm going to do now is find a good home for my crossfire which I'll now remove this from and attach it to here I'll find a good home for it inside the front place here and I will also stick in my buzzer wherever it will fit and then I'll put the flight controller back on again and wire in the last few bits and then essentially we're done before I did any of this I of course checked continuity on my multimeter by listening to see if it beeps which it doesn't and you'll get a single short beep which is just the ESC charging up so we had no beeps and because KISS stuff is expensive I even went to the length of using a smoke stopper which I very rarely used so I just attached that before um, plugging in a battery which just saves me from a possible short circuit and there you go so we have no explosions everything appears to be good so we can move on to the next step next part will be wiring in the um, 
GPS, which is something I'm not particularly familiar with because I've only done it once, so I'll refer to the internet to find out um, which wires go where along this little um, set of pads here. Um, the only thing really to note is just be careful when you're wiring up the PDB because most of the versions that you'll have bought these days um, will be the revision 2 of the Wolf PDB, which is written here. Um, the pinout for the V1 is slightly different and it connects to the KISS VT board in a different way as well. So just double check you're using the right ones when you connect everything up. This build is now nearly done. So we've got everything in and installed. And I've checked for shorts. We meant to make sure that everything is okay. So you see that I've wired in the GPS. So we've got um, on the second row in, we've got uh, negative and positive. And then we've got the green and white wire, which are RX and TX. Pretty simple, just follow the uh, wiring diagrams. I've connected my capacitor and I've used a bigger one simply because I've got acres of space at the back. So this is a 1000 UF 35 volt. And then if we drop the KISS board, back on top as it's rather springy I've wired in my buzzer to um, buzzer plus buzzer minus and ground and the crossfire nano has been wired in as well so plus sorry minus plus um, TX and RX um, and that's it we're pretty much done um, I haven't bothered attaching my ESCs yet and I just quickly need to be able to swap around my wires um, to reverse the motors and of course you just do that by swapping any of these three wires um, to another pad and that will reverse your motor. So the build is pretty much done, there's a lot going on here, on here. a few, few bits I'm not sort of massive, massively impressed or not, a few things I'm not sort of super happy with, these ESCs being that far down still bug me don't like this wiring run, running over the top of this kiss board for the buzzer but the alternative was messing around um, re um, rewiring this connector or to lengthen the wires or um, attaching additional bits on but you know they're small bits so all I'm going to do now is download the Wolf PDB configurator connect this guy up to KISS V2 and make sure everything is working. I've also, if you see here, kept the um, button for the TBS Unify free, or should I say I've just unlocked that so it can now output the full 800 milliwatts and broadcast on all the channels and I've bound the TBS Crossfire um, Nano to my radio. So let's go to the computer. Right, I've connected the USB port to the Wolf PDB and I'm now going to start the software and plug in the. So now we're basically just going to follow the guide and update the PDB. So here we are, I don't want VTX in pit mode, and basically this is just the configurator that you can use. So you can add a call sign, sort of move it around if you want, big bad, um, timer we want, RSSI we want. Throttle I don't want. <clears throat> uh, LiPo voltage I want. Cell voltage I want. Don't 
don't want any of that. Video transmitter. I don't want the power. I don't want the band. GPS. Speed's kind of always nice to see, although hardly essential. Compass we don't want because this board hasn't got it. Home arrow, home arrow we do want. Satellites we definitely want because we want to know that we've got enough to safely fly. Coordinates I'm going to stick on. Simply, because it's kind of nice peace of mind. Um, ESC data, I don't want any of this on because we're not using ESC telemetry. And video mode is correctly set from PAL for me. Obviously, you can change it to NTSC if you wish to do so. I wonder if we can get these lower. And that is pretty much that. Um, the call sign you can change within the actual OSD itself when you're flying. So that's that done. Just save and come out. And then we'll go into the... I'll unplug. And then I'll remove the USB and stick it in the KISS board. We'll fire up the KISS GUI. Right, now that my Wolf PDB is set up, I need to sort out the flight controller. The first thing you'll do is go to flight controller flasher, select remote firmware, and then choose the latest version, and hit download firmware, and then the bottom will come up here and you'll simply flash it. I've already flashed this one to the latest firmware. I've selected TBS Crossfire here because that's what I'm using. I'm not going to do anything with PIDs so far. Not going to do anything with this setup other than change to D Shot 1200. I've got my AUX channels um, that I want to set up. ARM for me is the right hand switch, and high on KISS, high is basically the bottom position. Medium is the middle and low is the, um, at its default position. This particular case, I'm just going to keep it really simple. Arm is going to be on high and buzzer is going to be on a, another switch on medium, middle stick and turtle mod is going to be on the same switch, bottom position. I'm going to keep uh, low pass filter frequency at high in advanced. You can sort of change everything around that you want to sort of mess with. Um, so if you put your board in a different direction, you can change the flight controller orientation, change real LED colors, etc. And there's a lot more sort of bits and bobs you can do in here. I'm not going to touch any of them. I'm going to go straight to data output and plug in my quad and make sure it's working. And I've got my radio powered on as well. So I can see immediately that I've got Slightly twitchy sticks. Throttle is good enough for me. Roll is so close, I'm not going to bother setting my own points. I'm simply just going to trim it across. Pitch again is good enough for me. I'm not too fussy. Let's get that centered. And the others are pretty much right. And just to check, Ox one arm. And it did arm. That's fine. And I've also got Ox three here. I'm just going to quickly dash back to configuration. Unplug my battery because it won't let me touch this otherwise. And I'm just going to quickly add level mode onto AUX3 bottom position. Not because I'll ever use it, but simply because 
it's handy as I showed in a video right so what we're going to do now is just test these motors make sure everything is all okay and we're going to hit test I know what I'm doing enable motor test motor one and on kiss you'll you do this with your stick so motor one is spinning the right direction according to this guy do the same with motor two again using my radio stick that's also running the right direction do the same with motor three oh we're being lucky that's also in the right direction motor four so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to unplug this quad and plug in my other quad and I'm just going to take a screenshot of the settings that I had there and then just copy them across. Right, I've just copied over my um, rates etc from my other quad. I've dropped down roll P from 3.9 to 3.8 and tweaked a little bit of the settings D. Um, I'm going to drop down a little bit as well just in case but it should fly pretty decent on these. I've copied my rates in as well. I've set the min throttle at 1070, max throttle at 2000, min throttle at 1000, and obviously mid, and I wanna do D shot 1200. And I don't run idle up like you'll see on a lot of the KISS pilots, um, it's unfamiliar to me, so um, basically when I arm, my motors will, will spin. Just make sure everything's all okay there. I um, haven't really done anything, particularly in here, just set up the fact that I'm using a TBS Unify. My channel is usually race band three, and I put my min and max in. Um, nothing else I've really done here. Um, data output. Obviously we've already looked at, everything's all working fine. And my rates, I tend to some run relatively sort of slowish rates um, with quite a lot of curves. So I sort of love my center stick to be really slow and sluggish and then relatively quick and picking up as it gets towards the extremities. So my max roll and pitch and your are always around 1050 and I'll just adjust them slightly per quad. Um, I'm still finding my rates really on KISS because they feel slightly different than beta flight so I might actually increase this a little bit or possibly the RC curve but that's um, that's good enough for me at the moment um, and that is pretty much it. So the next part will be just to um, heat shrink and put a bit of soft foam um, underneath these ESCs, put some ESCs covers, ESC covers on and just tidy up everything ready for um, its maiden flight. And there we are one Kissed Hyperlaw CG 6 inch reporting for duty. Everything works. Bodged on some old ESC covers until I print out some new ones. Pretty happy with that. Might put a couple of zip ties on here actually just to stop these wires from snagging. Um, so basically, yeah, all I've done is heat shrunk the um, ESCs, put some foam tape underneath them and zip tied the ESC covers on, attached the GoPro ramp and that is pretty much that. And there you go, she works. So that's the end of this video, um, hope it was useful for, to somebody and in a later video if the weather's kind we'll see how this guy flies. Cheers guys, thanks, bye bye.